Welcome everybody to this video. Today we're going to show you a very simple backend workflow taking in API calls, performing calculation on JSON files through a very simple script and pushing the result into a MariaDB database. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is head to the GitLab repository that we've built for this specific backend workflow. In this repository you'll find detailed information on how the workflow works and more importantly all the actions that are pre-built, the code that we've pre-built for this specific workflow. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy the git, the .git uh, URL uh, because we will build the pre-built modules, actions and triggers uh, inside the Rax workflow now. Uh, so let's go and create a new workflow. I'm going to call it JSON Analysis to, into MariaDB. Um, so now we see that we have already a set of triggers already included in the in the in the, in the library in the Rax library, um, but we need to build a new one. So I'm going to head to the admin section of our of our UI, um, and then let's click into the module builder section. Uh, you'll see that we have already a few repositories listed here. I'm going to add the one that we copied just a few seconds ago. Um, I'm going to hit scan repository. You don't have to uh, add any user's credentials because this is a public repository, so you don't need any, any password or anything. Um, let's scan the main branch of this repository and we'll find three different modules. Um, these are the ones that we're going to need for the backend workflow that, we'll, that we're going to build. Uh, so I'm going to click build on each of these modules and head up to the module builder section of the UI where we can see that they are being built. I can refresh the page and wait for them to be successfully built. That's the case now, so I'm heading back to the dashboard, heading back to my workflow. Um, and now um, in the edit section of the workflow, I'll be now able to add the new modules that we just built. Uh, so let's add the Magic, Magic API first. Um, then we'll ask another, um, add another step, which is the analyze JSON files. A very simple script. And the last step will be the push into the MariaDB database. So now that we have uh, set up the skeleton of our workflow, the, the, the thing we need to do now is to configure each step. So I'm going to input, I'm going to configure and set it up um, to use with my database. So let's fill these fields out and we'll do a simple, very simple query on the Magic API. Um, all this information will be in the description of the video, so feel free to get back there for reference. So please make note of the endpoint, of the API endpoint, because we're going to use this endpoint later on for API calls and queries. So let's head to the second step. Uh, this second step will just take the, the, the file uh, coming out of the first step. So I'm going to add the link input and specify that I want the, the previous steps file. And last step is to configure the MariaDB connection to the database. Um, this is going to be the same credentials that I've used for the Magic API action. Um, and the last step will be to specify that I want to link the result file from the previous script, the second step of the workflow. Uh, so that's going to be the CSV that, out, that is output by, uh, by the second step. Okay, so at this point I'm ready to use the workflow. You see that the deploy button is available. Uh, everything's configured properly and now we're deploying the workflow, meaning that the workflow will be ready to receive inputs and be triggered by the API. So deployment has already launched one execution. It's already running. Uh, so I can go ahead and, and check the documentation and um, I know that I'm going to use this URL and I will need to build this URL with two information. First, the workflow endpoint, which I noted previously. So the other thing that we're going to need is the project ID. Um, I'm going to show you how to get this specific information. Um, this is something that is currently quite buried in, in, in the Rags interface. This is going to change in the future, but for now we have a workaround to get the project ID. So you head to the project page, uh, open a console screen, and, and you can re just refresh the page and click on the projects item. And um, if, you, if, you, if you check out the response, you'll see that there, 
your project with an object ID. Um, please take note of this project ID. Uh, this is the one that we're going to use in the URL uh, to query the API. So I'm making note of it right now. And now we'll be able to construct the right URL that we're going to use for the API calls. So let's copy this whole URL, paste it in our browser and add a slash stats so we can read the content of the database. So after hitting stats, I see that I have my database with this with a this, with this structure already ready. Um, it's just empty right now. So let's open a terminal window and we're gonna write our first uh, API read call. So we're gonna make a, a get query with the same URL. Uh, just specifying that we want, um, we, we need to accept JSON files. Um, this is just to test if the connection is working because we're going to get the same information as the one with we just saw on the browser page. So yeah, we get the same information. We just get the database structure at this, at this point. Um, so now we're ready to try our first post call. So what we're going to do is use the same URL, except instead of slash stats, we'll use the slash JSON um, terminology and we'll input um, JSON zip file, so a zip file containing several JSON files. Um, so this is what I'm writing right now. Uh, the JSON file, the example JSON file, you can get from the public repository that we've used since the beginning. So just download it, put it somewhere on your machine locally and use it uh, in the query in the terminal. So that's what I'm going to do, just drag and drop it. Okay, we're ready to query it, hit enter. Yes, okay, success. So we see that the query just passed on successfully. We see, let's go back to the Rags UI. We see now that the, the execution of the workflow has been started. So the second step has run. Uh, heading on to the third step. The first execution after deployment is usually quite slow because the, the, the platform is instantiating the Docker file. Um, first execution is finished. Let's head back to the database, refresh the page, and we see now that we have our first entry. Result, this is a pure result of the first run. Uh, what I can do is also check via the terminal page, my terminal window, and it's also showing the same information. Uh, we can do another, we can launch another query, uh, several of those, uh, just to check that everything is working properly. I can now input any file I want uh, if it respects the zip file format. Mm -hmm.